Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the daily crypto news and yes guys we're still giving away 500 xrp in the first video that we hit a thousand likes within 24 hours and maybe that's this video who knows but all you have to do to enter and make sure you do that is make sure you press the like button comment something down below and of course be subscribed if you've done that you're automatically entered into the giveaway and if you won you hear it tomorrow having said that though let's get into the first tweet of today as there are a couple of videos coming out today guys because it's really been a crazy day once again ian northving says on twitter okay as it's the 26th and the court day is today, I want to show you what company Ripple keep and why regulation is taken care of. Here in the 20th of August 2018, Brad and David go see the president at 11 a.m. with John Roscoe from the FHFA, which provides more than $6 trillion in funding. So here's a little bit of the calendar. It's actually very hard to read, but you can see Brad Gollinghouse CEO, David Swartz, john roscoe special assistant of the president white house and down below here steve mnookin and the rest of the guys department of treasury all of them uh, another screenshot of who john roscoe is really i think i've covered it once more on the channel and here we have the official statement of it all the federal about two six point two trillion dollars in you know in, in what goes around if you uh, is that the first one? Yes. If you, it's a little bit of a strange way he did this right now, one out of one, and then one out of two. But if you look at the next meeting, you will see Andrew Sutherland or Sutherland, who represents corporations, financial institutions, and individuals in U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission (SEC), U.S. Department of Justice (DOJ), and Finance Industry Regulation Authority (FINRA). So I believe E. Andrew Sutherland should be at the bottom right here. Then. Steve Mnookin, uh, uh, meeting with, it's too small to check out. Steve Mnookin, Senator Lindsey Graham, Robert Cook. Okay, this is just, I don't know, guys, maybe you can see it because the recording is sharper, but I can't see anything here at all. I see here, and Andrew Sud, maybe that's Andrew Sutherland. I think it's actually right there at the top one. I think it says it right there at 2 p.m. Um... On the right here, you can see who Andrew Sutherland is. And on the right, we can see all the, the I guess the verification of that he's really who we think it is. The next, it should be the other way around. It's like, he just, one out of, he did, whatever. One of the three. Next meeting is the controller of the currency, Joseph Oting, who has since left and Trump appointed Brian Brooks, has now stepped in. Coincidentally, used to work at Coinbase. You can see here, the guy, Joseph M. Oting, we talked about this before. It's just older stuff, but it's just to remind us of what we're working with here. Joseph Oting, former controller of the currency, joins Black Knight's board of directors. Brian Brooks, acting controller of the currency. And Coinbase chief legal officer leaves to take senior role at the U.S. banking regulator. The next day is Steve Mnookin, U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, and Robert Cook, President of Industry Regulatory Authority. Once more, it's all within this small meeting of a couple of days. Uh, by the SEC, by the way, it's official stuff. By Joseph Oting, who... Oh, no, this one. The next day, Steve Mnookin, U.S. Secretary, Robert Cook, President of Industry uh, Regulatory Authority. Do you really think regulation is a problem? It's all about implementation. CEO, President, and CEO of FINRA... Here we got that one. Other memberships, FINRA, District of Columbia Bar, Pennsylvania Bar Association, and Steve Mnookin here. We all know who he is, I believe. Lastly, and he deleted the tweet, I want to leave you with Deep Sun, Stephen Bull from the Deep, well-executed thread of Trump's executive order 13772, which mentions Ripple and many others. And he has a tweet right there. I believe he just messed up the tweet, possibly. Or what happened here? Like, why is it? Delete it then. Why is it not available if you press it like that and now it is? I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was just for one second. Executive Order 13772 titled Core Principles for Regulating the United States Financial System is an executive order signed by U.S. President Donald Trump on February 3rd, 2017. One of the objectives is to streamline financial regulations. We went over this document before, but to quickly go over it, Core Principles for Regulating the United States Financial System by the power vested in me as the president, 
I hereby order as follows. Policy. It shall be the policy of my administration to regulate the United States financial system in a manner consistent with the following principles of regulation, which shall be known as the core principles. Empower Americans to make more or at least independent financial decisions and informed choices in the marketplace, save for retirement and build individual wealth. Prevent taxpayer funded bailouts, foster economic growth and vibrant financial market through more rigorous regulatory impact analysis that address systemic risk and market failure such as moral hazard and information asymmetry. Enable American companies to be competitive with foreign firms in domestic and foreign markets and advance American interest in international financial regulatory negotiations and meetings. Make regulation efficient, effective, and appropriately tailored, and restore public accountability within federal financial regulatory agencies and rationalize the federal financial regulatory framework. Sec 2, Directive of the Secretary and Treasury. Sec 3, General Provisions. Basically, all of this really points to the fact that everything will most likely be stabilized. The fact of the matter is they are working on a regulatory framework as they want to make sure that all the companies in the U.S., especially these crypto ones and all that, will be able to operate, especially with right now the situation that's going on between the U.S. and China, where it's like, all right, which country is going to have the best regulatory framework for these fintech companies, for these companies in general, like for these, all the, these companies have to do with finance, and technology and crypto. Because the one that has will most likely win this race, right? So the U.S. right now, also combined with what they've said for years right now, is just they're, they're building something. They've been working on that for a very long while, just to make sure that everybody here can, yeah, can, can, can establish themselves within the space. You can read more a little bit into this if you want to. Another one he said here, Trump as well assigned a task for the U.S. Department of Treasury to report to the president the current regulations and their effectiveness in carrying out the core principles. Ripple is one of the participants contributing to the report, notably Prosper and Credit Karma, Chris Larson, chairman of Ripple, is a founder of the former and an advisor of the latter. Ledger X, a crypto-related platform, as well. You can see here Prosper, Ripple, Western Union, Ledger X, MoneyGram. Andreessen Horowitz, who's invested into Ripple, Bank of America, we know they have a connection with, Credit Karma, Coinbase, BBVA. Uh, IMF is also mentioned, of which Christine Lagarde is very positive about the future of crypto, and Chris Larson is also a member of the advisory board. Cryptographic financial services, distributed ledger tech, and blockchain-based network are recognized by the Treasury. They also acknowledge that many of the current regulations, which are outdated, do not fit the new technological advanced products and services. And again, you can read it all here, guys. I'm just not going over it too far because it's, it's stuff we've said before, and it's not new, it's older stuff, but it's just the fact that we all know and as can be seen here once more, that a lot of the regulatory, I guess the whole regulatory financial framework that's, that's set right now is not tailored for the newer demands, right? It's not tailored for the newer world. And especially with technologies like Ripple, things like that will have to adapt. Things like that will have to change. And with what we're seeing right now, it's taking bigger steps. But especially the fact that it's been known for years is just good. This is actually funny enough, exactly two years and one day ago, or let's just say exactly two years ago. It's fun, right? That two years ago we were talking about this. Right now it's it's, it's working as hard as ever. It's still in exactly the same uh, pipeline. And you can see how big this threat is right here. You can see how huge it is. Because everybody's been talking about this for the longest while, but, but then forgot about it a little bit. Why is that so? Because we know they're working on regulatory framework. We know, but we're not really hearing much from them come back, right? And that is because most of it has already been established and a lot is happening behind closed doors. Like a lot of the stuff you see right here is, is not stuff you're going to hear about on the news. It's not stuff you're going to hear about on Twitter, really, because, well, they, they're doing this, these things in meetings really privately. Maybe here and there you'll see a couple of reports like what he's kind of aggregated here. But you're going to have to look for it. They won't tell you this type of stuff. Even Ripple will not tell you too much yet until it's already really there. All the progress they've been making, it doesn't really show unless it's already at, at like one of the end phases or something like that where they really got what they came in for. And as of this point, Ripple is just at the start of what they want to get. They've been working on it for years and they're really getting far with it but still not close to where they want to get to. And, and all I can say is I'm excited for the amount of effort that they put into this and how far they've already gotten. Even though we can't really see where they are, I know for a fact they're already way further than any other party could have made them get. And Chris Larson has a very big part in that. So big shout out to him as well. I know he doesn't care about my shout out, but still giving it to him anyway. 
then uh, I just, uh, whenever I check and open Twitter, I cringe again. Dior Dondara, Mr. Pool Drop. Because, yeah, we got something new. We got more from the Ripple Riddler. You know, the Riddler we all like and love. <laughs> you know, uh, I despise this type of stuff. But once more, I got to update you guys because still, whenever I check the comments, there are a ton of people who are like, man, I like those riddles. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to help you out. So, yeah, we got a couple of smiley faces here. Yeah, that, that means, you know, something um, something's going to happen. And that's that's it. You know, that's... uh. That's basically it. Somebody says, these drops make me want to short Bitcoin more and more. <laughs> I don't know why you would short Bitcoin. These things are all XRP related, right? Or is it like a, a, a crypto guy? I thought it was only XRP. <laughs> I, think, I think he's only XRP talking about these things. But yeah, I just think it's really, really BS. Now, talking about the lawsuits from a little bit earlier, we mentioned it. I actually have not gotten any like big um, come outs. I just noticed that a lot of people are making uh, articles right now, even though this this whole situation has been known for a very long time, right? I've actually not heard the end result. I just know the lawsuit is pulling through. A major Australian financial service firm is suing U.S. blockchain company Ripple Labs over allegations of trademark infringement. And I thought something was going to be coming out today. Uh, here's another one. But I, I, I don't know the, the, the consequence. I don't know the situation. Like... Even though it's the 26th year and I've been looking everywhere, I haven't gotten any update on it. Like, I haven't gotten any update on what exactly has happened um, re regarding the lawsuit. But maybe it's because it's pretty early in the day of the 26th still. And I don't know if this is Australian time, 26th, or US time. But maybe US right now is like 6 a.m. You know, so maybe they're not done with it yet. I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. An online in interlocutory. Well, I don't know what that word is. By the way, guys, I'm not a native English speaker. I try my best, but I don't know every word. You guys, just let me know in the comments down below what this means because I learn a lot from you guys correcting me down below, and I love it. An online interlocutory hearing was held by the court on August 20th, and a case management hearing took place on the morning of August 26th. I actually don't know if he's already, like, talking in the future sense here or if it's already really happened because I don't know what the time is. But this is about, this was written 15 hours ago. 15 hours ago was 2 a.m. on the 26th in in Europe here, you know, GMT plus 2. That means it was the 25th half throughout the day, but it was, you know, I guess maybe like 8 a.m. in Australia, whatever. Ripple unveiled PayID in June, yada, yada, yada. Ripple described, yada, yada, yada. Rip, Coin, Cointelegraph reached out to PayID Independent Reserve and BTC Markets for comment. Independent Reserve informed Cointelegraph that did not come out of the case. Uh, basically, there's no result. They just kind of written in the future tense. I was like, mm -hmm. but no, nothing cool to find there. And in the end, yeah, all I can tell you guys is just, I'm not too happy with this lawsuit. I don't know if it's going to be anything positive or negative for XRP. I just know the other lawsuit is also commencing today or ending today. But I, I think that's in a couple of hours, actually. If I, if I remember correctly, I think in terms of San Francisco, it's supposed to be like 9 a.m. in like two, maybe three hours from when I'm recording this. I don't know when I'll be uploading it. So yeah, uh, maybe we'll see. But we'll see, guys. That was it for today's video. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it. I had another price analysis one, but I'll talk about it in another video. I think it's been a pretty crazy day for XRP, guys. Gotta admit. And I think these lawsuits, they also mess with your brain a little bit as you really don't know whether or not you should be going into it or, or really stay away from it at all. I just know that Chainlink is getting a little bit closer and I'm not liking it at all. I just wish XRP would go to the third position again, but maybe maybe with some good momentum today, it could happen. Take care. Have a nice day, everybody, and uh, enjoy your weekend. It's middle of the week. What am I saying, guys?